The mechanism of action of aribulin is quite interesting. It's, a, it's an analog of a natural product, halochondrin B, which is a microtubule dynamic inhibitor. It results basically in stacking of the mitotic spindle dur during uh, G2 and M and causes uh, cell cycle arrest at that phase, uh, resulting in a mitotic catastrophe, and that introduces uh, program cell death, resulting in uh, the, the killing of tumor targets. So it's a fascinating mechanism of action, and um, <clears throat> there are other mechanisms of action of aribulin that are also coming into to play and, and have just recently been published. In particular, uh, there was a paper uh, published in 2014 in experimental model systems looking at vascular remodeling following exposure to aribulin. Uh, and interestingly, it showed that this remodeling effect was really quite striking, and it was in vivo in actual uh, tumors experimentally. And it uh, probably results in actually uh, what might sound contradictory, but actually an increase in perfusion into the tumor, which might actually facilitate delivery of chemotherapeutics uh, into the tumor bed. Moreover, um, it's been shown in those same model systems that the hypoxia that's normally associated with a tumor microenvironment, which is very profound and very severe and an important cause of resistance, uh, particularly to radio resistance, but also to chemotherapeutics, um, the hypoxia constraints are relieved after exposure to aribulin in vivo. More recently, just last year, there was another paper in the, in the British Journal um, looking at the same effect in humans. And in human subjects, a similar observation was made that there was an increase in uh, oxygen delivery within tumors in patients after exposure to aribulin. So I think that's pretty interesting. It's, it's kind of parallel to the vascular normalization effects we've talked about over the years previously with other anti-angiogenic approaches in human cancer. And that's thought to be an important mechanism to reduce hypoxia, increase drug delivery, and then you'll get a better therapeutic response as, as a consequence. So aribulin is a, um, is a novel agent with regard to its mechanism of action. It, it stops polymerization of the microtubules, similar to the vinca alkaloids, but, but different. It, it causes these non-functional clusters of, of tubulin because they cannot be, cannot be assembled. So it, really stops the, the leading edge of the microtubule. And I, that immediately says invasiveness to me, when cells need to move forward, you know, because they're either a, a breast cancer cell and they need to metastasize and invade, or if they're an endothelial cell and they're trying to make new blood vessels, you know, for the, for the breast cancer to uh, get um, oxygen, you know, and nutrients, for example. So it is um, both antimitotic, so it's antiproliferative. It'll shut down mitosis and, and stop cell division, but it's also anti-invasive, anti-metastatic, and I mesenchymal, these cells that are sarcomatous-like in their shape and in their biology, creeping along, assembling microtubules at that leading edge to invade through the tissue and then ultimately into vessels and to, and to metastasize. So, um, aribulin um, is very strong on both of those uh, parts of the metastatic and metasta metastatic process. Cancer cells are not static. Uh, indeed, they're very dynamic and can have a range of different uh, properties and cellular activities and functions. And one of the um, problems in human cancer is the ability to uh, metastasize. And in order to do that, a cell has to make proteases uh, that can allow digestion of the extracellular matrix so that they can move about. They have to have a motility capability, which is not easy for a cell to acquire. They have to be able to invade through blood vessel or lymph vessel walls to gain access to the circulation. They have to survive in that circulation environment, which is a hostile environment because of the immune system. They have to have just the right repertoire of adhesion molecules to adhere to a distant capillary bed. They have to be able to exit the vascular system, which is another type of cellular function, and then survive in a completely different microenvironment that's foreign to them. In order to do that, uh, uh, cancer cells of epithelial origin have to go through a transformation called the EMT, or the epithelial mesenchymal transformation. And that is the acquisition of these capabilities to be able to have motility um, and uh, survive in the circulation and then be able to set up and establish new colonies in a distant site in a foreign 
uh, territory, if you will, with a different microenvironment. And so um, ideally it would be nice to have molecules in terms of therapeutics that could block that, that EMT transition uh, because that might reduce the metastatic burden in theory and uh, result in therapeutic benefit. So, um, you know, uh, drugs that are known to have impact on this transition uh, I think are pretty interesting in terms of mechanism of action and it is appealing to think that if that's one of the mechanisms then it should result in therapeutic benefit. Yes, there, there are data on EMT transition following exposure to aribulin and this uh, drug actually does impact uh, the ability of the cell to go through that uh, transformation and, uh, and that is felt to be perhaps one of the mechanisms of action of aribulin in vivo. Certainly in experimental models this is the case. I think there's less information directly from the clinic to document that, uh, but you know, studies are forthcoming that, that may address that.